G'day everyone. Um, so I thought we'd quickly put a video together just based on some feedback that we saw on our video of the Lamborghini Huracan STO. You can watch that by clicking up there if you want. Um, so in that video, we do our brake test and the Speedo was reading uh, above 100 kilometers an hour. I think it was close to 110 k's an hour when I did the brake test. And some of you complain that it's not accurate because we're braking well above 100 k's an hour. And um, I did explain that that's not the case and it doesn't really matter when we start braking above 100 k's an hour because our data logger is only logging from 100 kilometers an hour through to zero. And today I wanted to demonstrate uh, why that's the case and how it works. We've got our data logger up here. If you do want to find out more about this, I've left a link in the description below and it'll run you through the app and how it interacts with that. But effectively this uses a 10 hertz GPS. It's going to be logging our speed when we're driving. And the whole idea is that I'm able to drive along and it will capture everything uh, from acceleration to braking and that kind of thing. Now, this is accurate to a hundredth of a second. And to be honest, a 10 hertz GPS isn't going to be super, super accurate when it comes to braking, but it will be accurate enough for us to get a good gauge. And it's gonna be accurate within centimeters as opposed to just meters. So today, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna brake from 130 Ks an hour 110 k's an hour and then 100 k's an hour and I'm going to show you that the braking distance doesn't change between those speeds from 100 to zero. So we're in our tennis ball, so let's go and do our brake from 130 k's an hour first. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. I've got our access road here, I'm going to get this up to 130 and then we're going to stop uh, from the exact same marker from our target speeds. And then once we're done with all of this, I'm going to explain the theory about why it doesn't actually make a difference for that 100 to zero time. So here comes our brake marker here. I'm going to get this at 1.30. Here we go. Okay. Alrighty, so let's have a look at our results here. So braking from 130 k's an hour comes up with a stopping distance of 35.23 meters and 2.6 seconds. So remember that number. Let's go back now and stop from 110 k's an hour. And what we are doing here as well is we're letting the car cool down between each of these runs so that the brakes are in the exact same state. So we're gonna go park it up have it sit there for a little bit until everything cools down and then we'll come back again for 110 k's an hour. Okay, so car has cooled down. We'll do our run now for 110 k's an hour. Okay, here we go. I'm glad I haven't eaten yet. Okay, so our break from 110 kilometers an hour. That was a stopping distance of 35.67 meters and a time of 2.54 seconds. So 35.23 was our first run and then 35.67 was that second run. So virtually identical. Okay, cool down finished. It's time for our last run. This is at just above 100 k's an hour. And for the record, the whole reason you have to do it above 100 k's an hour is because the speedo isn't entirely accurate. You have to use GPS 100 k's an hour, and we're stopping just above that so we can break through the 100 k an hour zone. So I'll explain in a second why all of this will make sense. So here we go, 100 k an hour stop. All right. Uh, you can okay. <laughs> All right, definitely over that. So uh, 35.85 meters. So uh, there you go. They are all pretty much the exact same. Now, the reason for that is when you jump on the brakes in a car and you hit the pedal as hard as you possibly can, what the car is doing, it's trying to pull the vehicle up as fast as it possibly can, but it's also trying to not lock the brakes. It's then using ABS, so that is locking and unlocking the brakes to bring it just before that threshold of uh, where you're getting the, the tyres locking and you're, you're skidding because you don't have control over the car. Now, as it's doing that, your tyres are going to be the friction limit. So if you have super sticky tyres, you're going to be able to stop quicker because you can bring yourself closer to that threshold, whereas if you have... Uh, you know, Ranger Raptor tyres, for example, it's going to take much longer to stop because the tyre doesn't have that coefficient of friction. 
Now, what's happening is when I hit the brakes from 130 k's an hour, we're reaching our maximum braking potential and that will run all the way through to zero kilometers an hour. So it doesn't really matter if we start braking at 130 or just above 100, we are reaching our maximum braking potential almost immediately. And then from 100 k's an hour through to zero, we are braking at that maximum potential through to zero k's an hour. Now, there are some caveats to that. If we were to do 10 brakes in a row, obviously you're gonna get brake fade. Uh, if your tires are wearing or are super heating, you're going to have issues with stopping, but we don't have any of those problems because what we do is we accelerate immediately and brake straight away. We're not doing this multiple times to, to see what brake fade is like. It is just our first stop at the same location and the only variance is then gonna be the surface, whether it's wet or not, and we always call that out. So hopefully that explains why it doesn't really make a difference what speed we brake from. And uh, that is why we always have to brake from above 100 k's an hour, but whether it's 100, 110, or even 130 in this case, it's not going to affect the validity of our braking distance from 100 through to zero, which is the number that we quote. So hope you enjoyed that. If I got anything wrong, let me know in the comments section below. I think I explained that as best as I possibly can, but I may have made a mistake. So let me know down in the comments section below.